precious, most glorious and holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Brian Mason and this is part two of the Bible study titled Pray. St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 11, and from the first verse. And it came to pass that as he was praying, that is Jesus, in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, When ye pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. Give us day by day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive every one that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. This is that prayer which Jesus gave. It's seen as the model prayer. And it relates to God as Father. Father in heaven. And it is giving God the Father his rightful place where his name is hallowed. God is acknowledged as God. God is acknowledged as holy. And God is seen to have a kingdom. And it is a kingdom which is separate from the, the kingdom of Satan. A kingdom which is not of this world. And it isn't it something quite marvelous that pray, prayer, is with the living God. And it is in relationship to that which is of the kingdom of God. That which is of another kingdom. The kingdom which is centered upon God himself. And this prayer is to be according to what Jesus taught. Thy will be done as in heaven so in earth. In other words, what God Bringing, praying for that which God is looking to be done, to be done. And to be done as it is in heaven, so to be done here on earth. And it's prayer which moves God into fulfilling that which he has planned and purposed to be done. And it shows too that this relationship with God is day by day. 
and it's day by day that God himself will give the necessities of life, the daily bread. And the forgiveness of sins. Oh, isn't that something? The forgiveness of sins. To have the weight of that burden lifted. The weight of the heaviness of that which sin keeps away from God. Oh God, that this prayer which was once on the lips of people in the society of today where is this prayer even ones who did not know thee would have gone gone to church and to chapel and they would have made this prayer but yet it would be prayer without the Holy Spirit upon it. Prayer which was just empty words. But when your spirit comes and makes this prayer alive, then it means everything to that relationship with thyself as God. Because then it is living for thee. Living that you receive the glory day by day within the lives of those who have had their sins forgiven through the precious, precious blood of thy Son, Jesus. Thank thee, O God. St. Luke's Gospel. Let's see where we are. Chapter 18. Oh, it's a wonderful parable is this one of the widow and the judge. From the first verse. And he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Saying, there was in the city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, this man was not a believer. Yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith. This man was an unjust judge judge according to Jesus and shall not God avenge his own elect which cry day and night unto him though he bear long with them 
I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. Jesus is showing here that there, there are times when prayer needs to be persistent, that the answer may not come easily, speedily. But God knows of his own elect, those who are in Christ, those who have the living God in their hearts and are filled with the Holy Ghost. And it is that not to be discouraged, but to press on, Press on believingly, having the faith of the Holy Ghost. Not anything of human faith, because what can human faith achieve? It is the divine faith, that which comes from God himself, which will enable us to press on, to press forward and keep believing, even when all seems dark, doesn't seem an end to that which may come in persecution, that which comes against the living Christ within us. He tells us though, Jesus tells us, that it is God himself who will do the avenging. And the avenging will come. Touch not the apple of my eye. Because he that touches the one in whom God indwells is touching God himself. Just see what this one is. We're still in St. Luke's Gospel, this time chapter 21. And verse 36. Watch ye therefore and pray always, that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. Watch and pray always. Not just persistently praying on, but at all times praying, praying and watching. Watching, hearing, hearing what the Holy Spirit is saying and praying in line with the Holy Spirit. St. John's Gospel, chapter 17, and verse 9. Jesus, praying for the disciples. He'd already prayed to the Father that the Father would be glorified in himself. I pray for them, I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. 
What a wonderful, wonderful word this is. That Jesus, knowing that he would soon be leaving the disciples, he would soon be fulfilling the purpose of his coming into the world. To, be, to pave the way for the reconciliation of lost, guilty and condemned sinners with a holy, righteous and pure God. Through the one perfect offering of his own blood, that atonement, when his blood would be pouring from him, whilst he was nailed to the cross at Calvary. And Jesus knew that when he was resurrected, he would still not be with the disciples for long, for he would ascend back to the Father and take his own rightful place, having all authority in heaven and upon earth. And it was this wonderful, wonderful prayer of Jesus for those who would, would be carrying on the work of God. Because if Jesus had just returned to heaven, to the glory, and that was it, then what would have been the purpose of his coming? He had to have the means of others being able to teach and preach the word of God. Those who would be the instruments of the Holy Ghost for the taking of the gospel to every creature. Those who would be the instruments of the Holy Ghost, the inspired men of God, that the Holy Ghost would write the scriptures through. And Jesus makes it so clear that he was praying for these. And they were the ones who had been given. Yes, Judas turned out to be one who betrayed Jesus. But according to the scriptures, there would be one who would betray him. And Jesus, making clear that these men, these disciples, these followers of him, that they belong to the Father too. I and my Father are one. And we come to make our abode in you. Romans chapter 8 and the 26th verse in this marvelous passage of Paul We pick out this verse which helps us again to the understanding of how, how to pray. Because there are times when we don't know how to pray. 
Yes, the Holy Ghost might have revealed something specific to us to pray along certain lines. But there are other times when there can be that burden, the burden in the Spirit. And you don't know what it is, only that God is doing something. He's doing his own purpose, fulfilling his own plan. And he needs a body. A body. Yes, when I come in, you go out. When the Holy Ghost comes, he comes to take his rightful place and see through the reaching of the unreached, the lost souls, the dying souls without Christ. And it is prayer, praying, him praying on, a, on those occasions where I don't know how to pray. So that Romans 8 and 26, likewise the Spirit, the Holy Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray, for as we ought. But the Spirit himself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. This is different, not praying in words, not praying in tongues, not praying in words we understand, not praying in tongues, but the Spirit carrying, carrying His burden and praying when, we, when although yes, we can sense, I can sense the burden of the Holy Ghost praying through me. Yet he's carrying a specific burden and he is praying to the one on the throne and will bring that answer to the prayer. Ephesians. Let's have a look in Ephesians. I'm pretty sure. Yes, here we are. This is regarding to praying. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Yes, this is praying with the understanding, praying in the language which we understand. Praying always in the Spirit. Oh, and that's where praying in the Spirit, unless it's the Holy Spirit praying through us. Then He is directing and He is keeping us on course. And on course for the specific prayers. And in this particular instance, he's, the word is referring for all saints. Saints, the royal priesthood, 
of believers. Those who are in Christ. Those who know that they are in Christ. And the Holy Spirit is our, not just our enabler, but it is He who is doing that which has to be done. It's so vital to understand why personal prayer needs to be restored into the lives of all the royal priesthood of believers. And the one who does not like prayer the evil one himself, the enemy of God, will do everything in his means to try and bring other things in the way. This is why prayer has to be a discipline. Prayer has to be that which is recognized as absolutely vital to the life of those who are in Christ. Otherwise, it could lead to coldness. It could lead to not seeing the vitality of the need to be based, keep being based day by day in the Word of God. Prayer links in with the going on with God and links in with not just seeing but also knowing the position through the Word of God and through your life, through my life, the workings of the Word of God. Because then, signs and wonders shall be seen and all to the glory of God. O oh God, Keep us ever in the very centre of thy perfect will. That each one within the royal priesthood of believers will accept totally the will of God for them individually and go on day by day for the outworkings of thy perfect will, where prayer and the study of thy word is absolutely central for the development further of the perfect will of thyself that Christ thy beloved Son, should be fully formed within each one in the body of Christ. For this is asked through the name which you cannot deny, that of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, that you shall be glorified through the Son. Amen.